Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news. Apologies for being a little bit late, but it actually is something that's nice to have on your plate. It's some developing Manchester United transfer news involving a midfielder and um, it is just a, little, a few minutes I had to go and verify things. I mean, I, I can't verify that bids are going in or, or anything like that, but it's coming from Sky Germany. I saw it on, um, I'll give them a shout out, at MUFC, uh, MUFC MPB on Twitter. Um, Manchester United in talks to sign Dennis Sicaria. Now, I just wanted some clarification that this was different to what Romano said this afternoon in his podcast, that Manchester United had held talks um, about Zakaria in December, which would be big in itself, but this Sky Germany report is actually talks now. So two big stories here. Romano saying that we'd had talks in December. Sky Germany saying that we're in talks for Dennis Sakaria now. We're also going to be talking about, I don't want to call them the hateful eight at Manchester United, but the eight players that want to go. Talk of Rashford New Deal. We'll talk about that. And Bruno Fernandes. But the big story is obviously Dennis Sakaria, which we're going to talk about straight away. And I want to talk about that in the sense that there's a lot of people who sort of like it and some people don't like it. And I've got some interesting insights into Sakaria because it's a player I've liked if you've been watching this channel for a good two and a half years, maybe even three years. And I don't agree with what, what some people are saying about him and his, you know, how he's not good at this and he's not good at that when actually he is good at that. So we'll have that discussion in a minute. But look, you know. We'll see what happens. But before we get all into that, let's just give a big shout out to Boohoo Man, regular sponsors of the United Stand, always looking to do United Stand uh, uh, viewers a deal. Well, at this time of year, it's natural to be thinking about everything that is coming in the next 12 months. And every year I promise myself I'm going to get down the gym and use that membership. I mean, it's already the 11th of January. I may as well wait till next year now. But I've been out walking, doing a bit of running. And if you're choosing to uh, do a bit of that as well, get yourself some of the Boohoo Man active range, which I'm wearing here at the moment. And uh, make sure you look the part in the weight section or or in weight rows. As always, Bart Bahuman have never want to let United Stand viewers pay full price, so they're giving you an absolutely fantastic 40% uh, off for everybody who's watching this show. All you've got to do is click the link in the description and use the code United Stand to get that great discount. So if you want to uh, add to your active wear range this uh, this 2022, let Boohoo Man sort you out with 40% off. Thank you very much to Boohoo Man for supporting the United Stand. And somebody just said. Who, what's Waitrose? So basically, whether you're in the weight section in your Boohoo Man Active range or you're in Waitrose, Waitrose is a, is, is a, is a slightly middle class shopping uh, um, grocery store in the UK. So you could be walking around buying some food. But look, I'm wearing my tracksuit. You could be wearing yours. Links in the video description. 40% off. Loads of stuff to get hold of. And 40% um, off with Boohoo Man is a very big bargain. You know what I'm going to do. Thanks, Boohoo Man. Links in the description. 40% off. And I'll tell you what's another big bargain. Um, thought you were driving Zakaria to Old Trafford, says SK. I would. If he wants a lift, I'll do it. But from one bargain with Boohoo Man to another bargain with Bor Borussia Mönchengladbach. See what I did? Boohoo Man, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Bargain, bargain. The reality is, uh, we had Romano on the show yesterday. This... Um, Zakaria is available for 6 million euros um, and Edgar says after watching the show today Ince is just like all the ex-players Rashi is United through and through but he has no one to look up to Ronaldo all about himself always putting blame on Fred not Scott says Edgar um, and we can develop that in a bit of it can someone cheer me up sad evening for me says Sean Dykes yeah Wood Wood might be going to Newcastle but look let's 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 pull all this in together and let's talk about Dennis Zakaria because Interestingly, I've heard people saying he's not very good at passing. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life. When I spoke about Zakaria two years ago, um, I, I, what did I say about him? I, I, what I like about him is um, his physical... I, I think he looks like um, an Aldi Yaya Torre. Now, in relation to the way he plays the game, he's got that sort of... You know, remember how Yaya Torre so used to have that little bit of hunchback run? You know, he's, he's sort of like on this front like that. Uh, Zakari is a bit like that as well. He can carry the ball. He is good in the tackle and he can pass the ball. And I think the way that he plays and the way that he looks when he's playing on the ball reminds me a bit of Yaya Torre. I like him. I've always liked Zakari. I've spoken about him on this channel for, like I say, probably since he was about 21, 22. So I like him. No one's going to make me not like this deal if we do it. The fact that it can be done now. Remember, he's out of contract in the summer. Mönchengladbach would happily take 6 million because it's 6 million they're not going to get in the summer. And Manchester United, according to Sky Germany, are in talks for him. Now, we understand that other clubs are in for him as well. But Manchester United, according to Romano today, there's two separate stories tonight. 
There's a story from Romano where he's saying that United were in talks with Zakaria's people in December, although no bid's gone in yet. And now Sky Germany are saying that United are in talks with Zakaria tonight. Now, look, let's put a big red flag up and say there's a hint. Borussia Mönchengladbach are obviously going to want to get Zakaria out of the team in January rather than the summer. So why can it not be what happened with Alvarez where Manchester United are being used as a name to boost interest from other people? Because if you do want Zakaria and you're Liverpool or Bayern Munich or Juventus or Real Madrid or Arsenal and you hear tonight that Man United are in talks with Borussia Mönchengladbach, you might pick the phone up and go, are they in talks? Yes, they are. Right, OK, we, we, we want to be in. So it could all it could all be about that. And as the, the RM says, we paid £50 million for Fred. Since when did our fans become so bloody um, dismissive of a player that's better than Fred for a 10% uh, uh, of the price? It's only 6 to £8 million. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Dejan, I'm with you. I mean, look, I, I'm actually going to talk about why Zakaria, I believe, is, is a good investment and a good player anyway. But I can't believe the amount of people who go, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want Zakaria. I mean, it's like, have you? Where, where have you been then? Have you been on holiday? Have you not been watching United in the midfield this season? We're trash. And you're turning your nose up at somebody that actually Bayern Munich like, Klopp likes, Arsenal like. And you're going, nah, nah, don't want it. Don't want it. I'd rather wait till the summer and spend 159 million, thousand million, billion on Declan Rice or Ruben Neves. And I'm like, I don't know where this I don't know where this attitude's coming from because our midfield's trash. We need two midfielders. We can still get Neves or Declan Rice in the summer anyway. This is about now. This is about a player that comes in and benefits us now. And for six million pounds, it's perfection. We spent fifteen million on Dan James. And everyone was like, wow, it's peanuts. Doesn't matter. Fifteen million, don't matter. He's in the championship. Oh, whatever. Yeah, give him a chance. Fifteen million pounds doesn't really matter. Let's give him a go. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And I'm like we are in January. We are never going to get Ruben Neves or Basuma or Z or, or um, Declan Rice in January anyway. So you are set with a situation where it's do nothing or try something. Well, Manchester United have always been risk takers. Take the risk and do it. I think. I think. I just. We probably make six million in a match day at Old Trafford. Like it's it's no money, and his wages are not going to be any bigger than Phil Jones. I just think it's absolutely. The right thing to go and do. My only concern is that United won't do it. Um, but look, let me talk to you about Zakaria because some people won't know anything about him. And I understand all that. But you're not getting Neves in January. You're not getting Rice in January. You're not getting Basuma in January. You're not getting who you want in January. So do you want to carry on? No, no, no. Stop, stop your typing for a minute and listen to this. Do you want to carry on with Fred and McTominay and Matic? Or do you want to bring Zakaria in as well? And if you want to stick with Fred McTominay and Matic, enjoy Thursday nights next year, because I'm not. I'm not. I think we have to try something in January. And if this is the only thing that we can do, and let's not forget, Ranić, for the millionth time from so many journalists, is a big admirer, admirer of Zakaria, as is Jurgen Klopp, as is uh, Nagelsmann. I tell you what, that will do for me. That will do for me. United are desperate for some savvy business in the transfer market. I'd go for it with Zakaria, says Emily Derry. So let me talk to you about what Zakaria is, because some of you won't actually know. He's six foot three. So what I like about Zakaria, and I'm going to put my hands up here and say, look, look, is he the same player he was before the knee injury? I don't think his ability's gone. I just think the buzz has gone. And that can happen with a player because I think before his knee injury, he would have been... So he's just 25. So he's just 24 when he comes back. So he's 23 when he got his knee injury. And he was basically out for about a year. Um, there was a lot of buzz around him before the knee injury. And then the knee injury happened. COVID happened. And I think people just sort of ignored him. And I think the reason they ignored him is the buzz went with the knee injury. And then everyone knew he was coming towards the end of his contract. So I think there's a lot of people looking at Zakaria now because he's going to be out of contract and they're like, well, why would I spend 20 million for him last summer or 40 million this summer before? Let's let's just wait till his contract runs down. He's six foot three. So, you know, he's, 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 he's almost as big as McTominay and we know McTominay and Matic get picked in a lot of games because they're tall. So he brings the height. Um, he's mobile. He is mobile um, and he's good in the tackle and he can play centre-back and he can play CDM. 
Now, one thing that some people have said about him, and one of the things that I really liked about him, and I, I used to talk about him in the Euros, and I couldn't understand why he was on the bench in the Euros for Switzerland. Now, Switzerland did relatively well in the Euros, but I still thought, you know, he should have been playing ahead of Xhaka, and it didn't happen. Do you think Ranić will make any transfers at all by the end of January? Sucks that the board has a say over transfers. Davin, I think this is the transfer to do, and I think it needs to happen. I'd only get excited about Zagaria signing if Ranić switches to a 4-3-3 formation and plays him in a single pivot ahead of two attacking midfielders, says Daniel. Well, I think this is what he wants to do, because if you listen to what Ranić said last night, he said that even when we were playing with three midfielders, we couldn't get hold of the midfield. We bought Dan James for 15 million, we sold James for 30 million, take 6 million from the deal, won't cost us anything, says Roger McCormack, or it's 50% of the dividends that that the Glazers have just handed themselves. Can he change us though? It's clear players from Germany need time to adapt. Look at Sancho, Havertz and Werner and Zakari is a bit injury prone as well. He's not injury prone. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to shout at that. I'm going to shout at you, you Ben. Like he's not injury prone. He's not injury prone. He had a knee injury and then he's had COVID twice in a year. That's it. He's been back from his knee injury for a year and he's had COVID twice. That's it. He's not had any other injury. He's not injury prone. He had a bad injury. He's not injury prone. Rashford's selfishness and the lack of chemistry amongst key players could be down to Ronaldo. Since he came, we became a team of individuals. Okay. Rash is back. It's a risky deal, not because of his playing ability, but I can see the Glazers buying him for five million, then saying we don't need a world-class CDM. Uh, Sean, I don't think that would happen because you might have a new manager in the summer. Mark, what the hell is with this Ronaldo leaving now? Rumors, please clear it, brother. That's not happening. I don't, I've never even heard the rumor. It's not happening anyway. Maybe just maybe Zakaria shows up and makes an excellent and exciting partnership with Donny, and then we have our pairing of the future. Bring it on, says Marco. Look, as I said, I don't understand why people are so negative about the Zakaria deal because for me, even if you don't, even if you don't really want him. And I do. It's it's like it's like you know, it's cold outside, and you've got to walk to Tesco five miles away, and it's freezing cold, right? And the only jumper you can wear is one you don't like. It's a green jumper. I'm not, I'm not wearing it, then I'll walk out in the cold. Well, you put the jumper on. You you, know, you put the jumper on to try and keep warm, and that's what I feel like. It's like, it's almost like some of our fans are going. I don't want Zakaria, I want Neves. Well, that's not going to happen. Do you want Zakaria or nothing? And and it feels like some people would rather have nothing. And I'm like, well, that's that's just to me is stupid because, you know, it's like walking outside without your jumper on. Like, you're going to get cold. But if you put that jumper on, it, it might keep you warm. It's It's got to be worth it. And the reality is as well, Ranić likes him. He's the manager. Surely... We've, we've recently said that, look, you know what? Mourinho deserved the sack, but also he didn't deserve not to get backing when he'd finished second in the league. You know, you've got to back your manager. You've got to back your manager, and, and Rangnick likes him. And for £6 million, it's the perfect signing for United as well, because a lot of people are saying, well, he's the interim manager, so they won't spend any money on him, which I agree. I don't think they'll spend any money on big money on Rangnick in, in January. But this is, a, this is a signing that Rangnick will go, well, I like this signing. And United can go, well, it costs nothing. It's six million. Let's do it. We've given him a player. So it works on so many le uh, levels. And um, if you give him a contract, he's worth 20 million instantly, says Max Gilbert. Well, nobody said that. And I think Max deserves a big clap for that. Of course, if you pay six million for Zakaria at 25, he's valuable. You know, you, you've made them, you know, as a valuable commodity he's worth 20 million at least straight away straight away so yeah you know it, it works on many many levels mark if we don't finish in the top four would you rather finish seventh no i, I wouldn't the honest tiger i'll be honest with you the honest tiger I, I would if we don't finish in the top four i hope we're in the europa league I, I, I always want United to be in Europe, even if it's banter. It's so silly we set, can set, we can sell him for 25 million if it doesn't work anyway, says SK. And he might struggle to make an impact or change our midfield before the summer players come into the Prem. Look, Thomas, I agree with that. And I want to talk about, I want to compare him and, and his passing um, with um, Fabinho in a moment, just to show you how there's this myth that he can't pass. Um, because although it's the Bundesliga, the Bundesliga is... You know, actually, when you're performing at Munch and Gladbach, you're not at Bayern Munich, so it's a little bit harder. And it's not a, it's not a pub league, uh, the Bundesliga. And it's still, you know, a 50-yard pass is a 50-yard pass. A 40-yard pass is a 40-yard pass. So we'll talk about that in a minute. I do agree with people that if you bring a player in in January, they won't necessarily hit the ground. Bruno did, but some people don't. It, they don't. I accept that. But it goes back to the point again. We, I didn't even realise this. Here's a bit of breaking news for you. 
Um, I mean, Thomas says he might he might struggle to make an impact or change. Of, yeah, I agree with that one. But, and I'll adapt on that one. But did you know that I was looking at the fixture list today and I was like, there's no game on the 30th, of, the weekend of the 30th of January. Like, there's no, there's no 29th, I think it is. I was like, well, I thought, is that FA Cup? And then we're playing Middlesbrough on the 6th. There's a bloody winter break. I, I, I didn't even, we're having a winter, the Premier League's having a winter break. There's no Premier League games between the 23rd of January and the 6th of February. There's a winter break. I can't believe it. There's there's a winter break. Man United have had more breaks than a bloody breadstick. You know, breadstick in a washing machine. Doesn't really work. But they've had, we've had so many breaks. Ollie gave him a break before he got the sack. We've had the break because of COVID. Like we we've, we've had so many breaks, but we also know we've got loads of games to play. So the stupidity the stupidity of the winter break is that we're going to have another two weeks off when we don't need it. And what's going to happen? In February, March, April, June, January, April, May, we're going to have three games a week. So what happens when we hit February, March and McTominay gets injured or Fred gets injured or they both get injured? Like, I accept that Zakaria may take time to adapt, but is that not the perfect scenario anyway? Because we've got so many games having somebody who um, gives his legs in that midfield who's especially CDM as well but we don't necessarily have the pressure of having to throw him in straight away anyway but Rangnick might do that from watching uh, Zakaria also looks like the ideal style of midfielder who will surely be keen to bring in an upgrade on the likes of Fred and Matic says Apollo Mark could it be that the board are reluctant to trust Rangnick with the signings and would rather wait for a new manager despite the consultancy role says Rash well if they do that they'll end up in the Europa League and that's what I'm saying Zakaria and Kamaria as a paired midfield signings would be bargains and progress as they're both relatively cheap yeah but apparently I, th I think we need to stop talking about Kamara Daniel because I think Kamara actually wants to run his contract down like, I know Beth and uh, Adam were talking about this on the afternoon show about Lingard and Spurs interest but Lingard wants to run his contract down it's about it's about more options more money he, he you know basically Lingard could push for a move now and United would let it happen because they get money instead of no money Lingard wants to run his contract down like Pogba does Apparently, Kamara wants to run his contract down. Knowing us, our board will waste all of January trying to get them to drop their price from 6 million to 5.9 million, says Lee. How credible is Hurst class? He's talking about Rashford being on top of the list to PSG. If Mbappe leaves, he would do great in that league, to be fair. I haven't seen that, Anesh. And if you could let us know how uh, recent that news is, we're going to be talking about Rashford in a bit. Zakaria would, at the very least, provide viable competition in the midfield for McFred, says Emily Derry. Yeah, look, I think... For one, I don't think there's anybody in this chat that doesn't like Zakaria who has watched him in any depth. I don't. You might have watched a few games, but I don't because I, I I genuinely have bias because I like him, like him, and I've liked him for a long time. But I'm not stupid. Like I, you know, he's not rubbish, and he's I think he's better than what we've got. So I certainly think it's worth for 6 million in January to go for it. 100% I'm sure on that. It is the right deal to do. It might not work because it's Bundesliga to Premier League, but I am 100% sure it is. What I can't get my head around is these people who are saying he's shit, I don't want him. Let because you're basically saying let's stay stick with what we got, which we know has been shit this season in the midfield. So I understand the angle I don't want Zakaria because I want Neves, but that's not going to happen. Your choice is probably Zakaria or nothing. And for me, for 6 million pounds if it doesn't work, it doesn't work anyway. But one, what I did want to bring in as well, because I've heard a lot of people saying, I don't like Zakaria, he's shit at passing. Right, let me just tell you this. Scott McTominay this season, um, passing uh, pass success percentage for Scott McTominay in the Premier League this season is 85.8%. And um, his uh, average passes per game is 386 So McTominay is averaging about 39 passes a game and his pass success rate is 86%. Fabinho in the Premier League is averaging 55 passes a game, so nearly 20 more than McTominay, and his pass success rate is 88.5, so it's 2.5% better than McTominay's. Zakaria, um, he's averaging 50 passes per game in the Bundesliga, so 15 more than McTominay, and his pass success rate is 90%, which is better than Fabinho and 4% better than McTominay. So anybody who's saying that... that um, that he's um, and and interestingly his key passes per game is 0.5 the same as Fabinho he's a holding midfielder with a very very high pass succession rate and also 
he's not got what I like about I don't really like stats but pass success rate if you only play 10 sideways passes could be 100% but when you've played when you're playing 50 passes per game and you've got a pass succession rate of 90 they can't all be sideways five five yard passes so this is one of the things I always did like about Zakaria I think he's a very good passer of the ball and he's got a good passing range. He can pass 30, 40 yards. He can pass 10 yards. So I don't know where this is coming from that Zakaria can't pass because it's actually one of his big strengths. He actually is very good at passing. Um, and that's one of the things I've always liked about him. He's a specialist holding midfielder. Um, he can carry the ball as well. Like I say, one of the things that I, I keep bringing it back to sort of an Aldi Yaya Torre, and I don't mean it in an, event, in, in an offensive way, but Yaya Torre was one of the best midfielders in the in the world when he was in the Premier League. And Zakaria is playing in the Bundesliga. So I can't say he's like Yaya Torre. But um he does like to he does like to carry the ball and um and, and, and he's a good passer of the ball as well. Um so, you know, and I think that as a specialist holding midfielder, it's exactly what we need, and he's mobile. I can't guarantee he's gonna be the next Fabinho, but you know, Fabinho came from Monaco and was pretty much playing as a right back. You know, I wanted Fabinho at the club. So, trust Goldbridge. Trust Goldbridge. And that's another player. That is another player. Um, you've got to be really United stand old school here. But we used to talk about Fabinho two and a half years before Liverpool bought him, saying he'd be a good signing. Because he, he had George Mendes as his client and Mourinho, obviously. And it was like a lot of it, you know, we had a lot of discussions about Fabinho. He's the, he's the, he's the one that always hurts Fabinho because... We could have got him for so cheap. We were talking about on this channel good two years, two and a half years before he went to Liverpool. They got him and he's one of the best holding midfielders in the world. Zakaria, I'm not saying he's the next Fabinho, but he does play that position. We need a CDM. If is if is all the board are willing to buy, unfortunately beggars can't be choosers. Hopefully he comes in and does a job, says Sean Turner. I, look, I absolutely don't I'm not I'm not convinced it's going to happen. My, my thing is, I really hope it is going to happen. Hakimi says, Mark, could you help me out getting a new cut? Because I've been jobless since this COVID pandemic started, says Hakima. Okay, you've just spent a super chat to ask me that. Get a cut. Short to medium range passes like 90% plus. His only real weakness is finishing, but we won't need him for that, says SK. And it's on the United Stand Twitter page from about an hour ago. Also, Zakari would be great as he would bring a buzz quality and energy to the midfield, says Anish. I just think it, it's a no-brainer signing. And the only thing that concerns me about it is how credible um, United's interest is because everything suggests that that's perfect. But you know what will probably happen? You know what will probably happen? Arsenal are looking for a midfielder. Smoke on that for a moment. You don't want Zakaria. He goes to Arsenal. Our rival for top four. He does a job for Arsenal. You'll all go, we should have got Zakaria. And Arsenal are looking for a midfielder, so just watch what you wish for, because I guarantee you, if United don't get Zakaria, they won't get anybody. Mark, I watched Zakaria live when the Swiss played Northern Ireland, and he was the best player on the pitch, says Ross. Um, and he could end up at Arsenal. So look, 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 let's wait and see what happens. But look, the, 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 the positive two things I can say is that Sky Germany tonight are saying that United are in talks with him. Let's see what happens with that. And Romano today confirms that United did have talks with his representatives in December and that Ranić likes him. So let's just wait and see. I'm really hoping it happens. I think it's the perfect January signing because it's a real bargain for a player that ticks a lot of the boxes. And I've always been a long-term ad admirer of Zakaria. And admittedly, I must admit, you know, that admiration did drift over the last year. I, I You know, I, I haven't paid a massive amount of attention to him over the last year, but... I do like him, and I and I think it's you know for that price, go and get him, and he'll be, you know even if it doesn't work out, you'll sell him for twenty million in a year or two anyway. Waiting for three hundred k a week deal for Rashford and McFred in midfield says Amrenal. So what what which are we going to talk about? Let's actually talk about this. Actually, this is coming out um, in relation to Marcus Rashford. Now there's a lot of people talking about Marcus Rashford today. Um, obviously, we spoke about Rashford with uh, Paul Ince this morning, and uh, he said he wouldn't drop him. He'd like to keep him in the team, um, but. This is, it. this is the story here then. So six months ago, when Real Madrid declared their interest in killing Mbappe, PSG started drawing up a short list of possible replacements. Uh, Marcus Rashford was at the top of their list. That's from uh, Hurst uh, Class, who is a uh, reporter for The Times. I mean, look, you know what? 
people are going to laugh their bloody head off. But there's a tweet going around this morning um, of mine where I said that um, Marcus Rashford was one of the best left wing wingers in Europe um, and was in the same sentence as Neymar. Now, it's totally out of context because it's two and a half years old. And at that time, that was when Rashford was one of the best left sided attacking players in Europe. Saying it now, you know, as I said, Harvey Barnes is having a better season. So it wouldn't surprise me if PSG did look at um, Marcus Rashford and have him on their scouting list. And I, I think they still would have him on the list. I mean, the reality is, however you want to dress this up, Marcus Rashford is performing way below the level he is. Now, how high you let you think his level is, is up to you as an individual. You know, some of you might think Rashford's got the potential to be world class. Some people think that, you know, he might have the potential to be decent. Some of you might just think he's overrated. But wherever you, you are on that chart, he's way below that at the moment. I think everybody can agree whether they think he's Marcus Rashford or Marcus Trashford, which I think is offensive. You'd have to agree that he's way below any level at the moment. It's the worst he's, he's been playing and he doesn't have the excuse of injury anymore, you know. So, you know, there's a big issue with Rashford at the moment. But I, I, I think we can work through it with the player and, and the club. And I think we can get a player back. Um, whether his future should be at United or not, I suppose you could debate that. But knowing the affection Manchester United Football Club have for Rashford and the affection he openly portrays for Manchester United... I don't expect Marcus Rashford to be leaving Manchester United anytime soon. So the solution for me is that we, we find a solution where we get this talented player back being a talented player for Manchester United. And, it you know, there's no guarantees that that can happen, but I think that has to be the end game. And, um, you know, I, I think that clubs like PSG would be looking at Rashford because his reputation as a player, you know, has been there for a number of years. So the interesting thing is that the Mail are saying that um, there's a big decision for Rashford to make because by the end of this season, United will start negotiating a new contract with him, which I find very interesting because I think his current contract, and I, I am speculating here, but his current contract is somewhere, it's like Martial's, it's somewhere between sort of 200 and £300,000 a week. Well, if you're negotiating a new contract, you would imagine that that contract starts knocking him up to three hundred grand a week. Well, he's simply not worth that. But Manchester United, as we know, are terrible at handing out players that don't deserve high wages, high wages. So um, new contract talk is not obviously going to start kicking in. Um, they also said in the article that there's a feeling that Rashford would perform better under Pochettino. I find that sort of story a load of nonsense. Um, these are players for Manchester United. We're Manchester United. We're not Rashford United. We're not Ronaldo United. We're not Pogba United. You cannot, if you're a professional footballer, there can never be a thing of, well, if we get Pochettino, I think I'll play better. And that's just that's just so wrong, isn't it? No, I wasn't good under Oli. I wasn't good under Mourinho. I wasn't good under Rangnick. But if you get me Pochettino, I think I'd be good under him. Like, we're Manchester United. You, you either play well as an individual, um, you take responsibility of your own individual, individual performances... We can't start getting managers because you think you'll play well under them. So I don't know where that's come from, and I don't. I certainly don't think it's come from the the mouth of Marcus Rashford. But um, I, I think that we have got a lot of problems at Manchester United at the moment. But I go back to what I said this morning um, in the interview with Paul Ince. Last night was probably the least irritated I've been at a United performance in a long time, even though I think on a different day, night, Villa would have won it. It's really hit home to me that we are not good enough. We, The players we've got are not good enough. Now, however, how many players you think we've got not that, that aren't good enough is up to you. But I'm probably like you. I've spent a lot of time getting irritated and frustrated with the way we play and you know, getting angry with the players. And I think what I've actually realised now is that this has been going on for so long. So long. You know, you could even say it goes back to Mourinho days for some of these players. And, you you know, you can figure out what some of those players are, I suppose, off that. Because they weren't all here then. But there are players that have only been here a year or two who are, who have fallen into the trap as well. I agree. But this has been going on for so long. 
that we can get to a semi-final and bottle it. Sometimes we get to a final and bottle it. We can go into a season thinking we're going to be in a title race and bottle it. We can play against Norwich and be played off the park. You know, this keeps happening. And I just don't buy into the fact that it's um, lack of effort. I don't think it's lack of, lack of effort. I don't even think it's down to bad coaching, even though it's universally accepted that the coaching under the previous manager wasn't great. I still think a lot I still think if you gave Oli you know the French national side to play with would we have still got beat 4-1 by Watford only if they're downing tools and you know as we know with the players they didn't down tools for Oli I think I think it's abundantly clear to me that United have assembled a very expensive squad with a number of players that have an overinflated ego and are on ridiculous money but actually shouldn't even be here it's a quality issue for me and that you can look at that in a very level-headed way, without ranting, without being abusive, without, you know, being anything other than pragmatic and going, look, you know, I don't mind if I, I'm stood in front of the whole United squad. I would say, you're not good enough. Some of you, I think, can be good enough, are good enough in the right system with the right players. Some of you, it's nothing personal. You're very lucky to be here. You're not good enough. And I think that... What we're starting to see with United now is that when you go into the Villa game on Saturday, I'm not expecting United to, to go to Villa Park on Saturday and play Villa off the park and win. I think at best we might get a win like last night where we take our chance, they don't take theirs. I don't think we're good enough to beat Brighton 3 or 4 nil, or beat West Ham 3 or 4 nil, or beat Brentford 3 or 4 nil. I don't think we're good enough to do that. And I notice I'm not talking about top six teams. I'm talking about mid to top teams to bottom to you know I just don't think we're good enough to do that and I don't think that comes down to coaching and I think Ranić is struggling to play the way he wants to play because he can't get these players to play the way he wants to play we've got a real quality issue at Manchester United so when you talk about giving a contract to Rashford or letting Martial go or putting a 400 grand a week contract on the table and hoping that Pogba signs it or you know trying to get Lingard to sign a new contract or letting Henderson go or you know keeping Mata for another year um, I'm not saying any of those decisions are right or wrong but some of them have to be wrong or right because we don't have the right quality in that team at the moment Mark, when do we start seriously giving up on Wan-Bissaka and maybe look at a right back? He's nowhere near getting the same stick as our forwards despite no services, Rash No, I think Wan-Bissaka has had a lot of stick, Rash to be honest with you I think there is there is question marks about Wan-Bissaka Even I, as a fan of Wan-Bissaka would put a question mark above him Um We've spent, you know, he is a player that we spent fifty million pounds on. He's another fifty million pound player that you, you, you know, is not a fifty million pound player. And I think Aaron himself would admit that. You know, he can't. You know, he's not a fifty million pound right back. Um, Fred's not a fifty million pound midfielder. Harry Maguire's not an eighty million pound centre back. They, they, they don't buy themselves. You know, the negotiations go on. But Aaron wan is not the only player that's got a question mark above his head. Some of you want to put a question... Well, I would put a question mark above Marcus Rashford's head. I think he would as well at the moment. I think he'll come through it, but there's a question mark. wan Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof, you know, Scott McTominay, Fred. Some would put one above Bruno. You know, it's like there's a lot of players with a question mark above their head at the moment. And... But for me, it's a quality issue. That's what it comes down to. I want Zakaria, but would he want to uh, join United uh, after these dressing room stories? Yes. I, 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 I can never buy into this, Jack. I never, ever can buy into this. It's like, you'll get somebody saying in a minute, what? why would Ten Hag want to come to Manchester United? And um, actually, I would like to see Zach Tomney combine two strong midfielders. Tomney would improve next to Zakaria. Well, it's funny. I said that last night, didn't I? Um, the Just before we go back to that, that manager story, um, there was um, a comment from Ralph Rangnick last night talking about Scott McTominay, which I think Rangnick con contradicted himself last night, by the way, because he, he praised McTominay and said, um, it wouldn't surprise me if he's a Man United captain of, in two years' time. But then he spent a lot of time talking about how the midfield got dominated. So I was like, so you're saying he's a, he could be the captain in two years, but you've just spent a, a, quite a bit of time talking about how the midfield got dominated. But a lot of people were getting very, you know, taking the piss out of Ranić for saying that McTominay could be the captain in two years. And there was a lot of emojis about throwing up and all that. If you check my Twitter, I was quite, you know, I was quite calm about it because I said at the end of the day, 
if Scott McTominay is Manchester United captain in two years, quite a few things have got to happen. One, he's got to improve massively. To improve massively, I think we all know now the one thing and maybe the only thing that McTominay's done well this season is get him to the edge of the box. Like, he's, his best asset is on the edge of the box attacking. So to do, for McTominay to be captain in two years, he would have to sort of become a bit of a Scottish Frank Lampard where he gets on the edge of the box a lot and scores a lot of goals. And to do that, you'd have to have a really good holding midfielder to give him the authority to do it because he hasn't had the authority under Ollie to get to the edge of the box hardly at all. I don't think for one minute McTominay will be the captain in two years' time. And if he is the captain in two years' time, you could suggest that we're probably going to be in a very similar situation to we are now. But we can all live and hope and, you know... I think that what I've seen in McTominay this season is he's a dreadful holding midfielder, but he's he's got something about him on the edge of the box. So get him to the edge of the box. But to do that, you've got to have a specialist holding midfielder. So uh, let's see. Uh, these Geordie oil merchants are taking my wood. Help me out, says G Goldbridge. Yep, wood's meant to be going to Newcastle. They want a bit of fight up front. Um, so yeah, let's wait. I mean, Lingard to Spurs, says Dex. Uh, well, I want to talk about the hateful eight. They're not hateful. We don't hate them. They don't hate us. But there's eight players, according to Samuel Lucas from the Manchester Evening News, that want to leave Manchester United. And we're going to go through those eight players now. But I wanted to call them the hateful eight because I like Tarantino, but they're not. I'd say we'll call them the had enough eight, um, of which Jesse Lingard is one. Now, interestingly, and I know Adam and Beth have talked about this, so this is why it wasn't at the start of the show, but um, Henderson... Um, is one of those eight and Lingard's one of those eight now Tottenham have been linked to Lingard today but it's more about getting Lingard in the summer so Lingard I think has leaked it or his agent has leaked it or it's been it's been quite well known now for a good month that Lingard has got no intention of leaving in January um, that's his decision you know, we, we, we're we all entitled to an opinion. It's football. My opinion is that, you know, just Jesse Lingard comes on the pitch last night and I didn't even notice it until after the game. He's in the corner and he, he does some back, hit, back heel nutmeg that comes to nothing. And he's, he's tweeting it. The FA are tweeting it. And I'm like, fucking hell. We're social media FC. But I thought, well, actually, Jesse, if, if you want to put clips of your skills out, maybe try and play 90 minutes a couple of times a week, which you're not going to do at United. You, you, you know, if you're a starter for United, we're fighting for fifth for the next three years. Like, you're a bench player for United. You're a starter for West Ham, maybe Everton, someone like that. But you're not going to start for United. And you've had 10 years to try and do that, and it's not going to work. And I like Jesse. I think he's turned himself around a lot in the last three years. And, um, you know, I think he's he's got a lot to offer. And I, it doesn't surprise me that um, teams like West Ham, Leicester, Everton will look at him as free in the summer because he's free. I think it's sad that he's running his contract down. But I think he's also pissed off because he could have gone in the summer. He was offered and promised first team opportunities by Ollie and he didn't get them and now in January the club are probably going we'd like to sell you now and he's probably going why should I make you 20 million I'll tell you what I'm going to go in the summer but I actually think if you're for his, from his football point of view you look at a year ago May to uh, January to May is still a long time half a season if he went and put a West Ham shirt on for five months and did what he did last year he's got a big chance of going to the World Cup at Christmas so I think it's a shame that he's lost another kick, another year of his career. And I think he's probably got people around him advising him to run this contract down because it will be well worth it financially and he'll have a lot of different options. But it's a shame that he's got to lose five months of his career to do that. Um, and look, he probably is still clinging on to the fact that he might get a run in the team and stay at United. And But you know what? There's only so many times you can run around a track before you get bored of it and... I really hope he doesn't sign a new contract and I really hope United don't give him one because we need to change. You know, I can't we can't keep talking about we lack quality and then go and give new contracts to Lingard and Pogba because whatever you think about Lingard and Pogba and they're definitely quality players, they have been here for 6 years, longer in Lingard's case and you know, 
the definition of insanity, and it, it works for them as well, is doing the same thing again. Has Lingard ever established himself as a first-team player? No. Has Paul Pogba ever consistently performed in a United shirt? No. And I'm talking from their point of view. They need a change as much as we need a change. We need a change because we need to bring new quality in. They need a change to to go and experience something else where they might play more consistently. The more I've seen United this season, the more I agree with Ricky. Found him silly at first, but I'm agreeing with him now. Respect to Ricky, says Jim. Ricky hits and misses like everybody. He does make some great points, but he's, he's he also misses with some stuff as well. Would United have sold Welbeck if he had the same amount of popularity and off-field philanthropy work like Rashford? Um, uh, Rashford's way better than Welbeck, Spandon. And if they do sign Zakari in January, do you still go after Nevers in the summer? Yes, yes. We need two midfielders, um, Achilles. I said this this morning. I, I think some people wrongly are thinking that if we buy Zakaria now, we won't get a midfielder in the summer. This is about... This Zakaria deal is, is £6 million and it's a midfielder that we need now. In the summer, when Pogba goes and Matic retires and maybe Donny goes, you need another midfielder anyway. So we've got to buy a midfielder in the summer no matter what. So don't let, don't let that be a reason that you don't want Zakaria. Saving Pogba's wages will free over £10 million a year. Zakaria is a no-brainer, says Klaus. Um, I just want to say, I want to give a shout-out to Robert McCormack because he sent us a message, quite a long one, and um, I, I was forwarded it. And uh, I was read, reading over it. We don't always agree about things. He, he's, he's a big fan of McTominay. I personally i am not a big fan of McTominay and Fred. But what he did say, and 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 it's not, he didn't get brought up in the match reaction yesterday. Talking about Rashford and Greenwood yesterday, um, the fullbacks suffered because when they overlapped, they didn't get the ball. Uh, Bruno and Cavani suffered because they didn't pass it to them and they didn't put crosses into the box. But I tell you who else suffered yesterday, and we didn't shout it out, and they both didn't play particularly well in the second half. McTominay and Fred, they suffer from the lack of work rate of those two wide players. Those two wide players are not they're, they're forwards. They're not Dan James, they're not Jaden Sancho. Dan James, Jaden Sancho are wingers and they know that part of their job is to work and help the fullbacks and the midfield. Greenwood and Rashford are forwards and when you play both of them, you get exposed in the midfield because they don't track back either. So, look, I hadn't said that yesterday and Robert McCormack uh, mentioned it in his message and he's absolutely spot on. And we, we're aware of this anyway. It's what killed us against Liverpool. They they got forward with their fullbacks on both sides and it killed us. And um, defensively, you know, everyone moans about the greed and the you know the bad passing and the shooting from distance, but their responsibility as wide players is actually to track back and help help the midfield and the fullbacks as well, which they're not particularly good at. And I'm not blaming them for that, although you have to. They are forwards, so it's not really going to be in their DNA, d -d -d DNA, is it? Um, so yeah, Lingard to Spurs won't happen. Henderson. So we've done Lingard. Henderson is the second one um, now. Samuel Luckhurst in the Manchester Evening News loves Dean Henderson. This is very obvious. And um, he said that Dean Henderson wants to go. Welcome to the Numbers Club, Jack. He said that uh, Dean Henderson wants to go and that Spurs are interested and Ajax are interested. And then he goes on to say, Ajax wants him on loan now and then Ten Hag might be the manager in the summer. So he's still probably thinking, oh, Dean goes to Ajax, plays well. Ten Hag comes here and he plays him in goal. So, you know, maybe that could happen. I think Dean Henderson, for me, you've got to be ruthless in football, haven't you? Um, David De Gea is still only, what, 30, 31? He's not going anywhere for five years. And he's proven, again, what a great goalkeeper he is. So, I, I, Dean Henderson's not, for me, going to be Manchester United's number one goalkeeper in the next two years. So, or even three years, probably. So, he's not going to get this opportunity. And goalkeepers are not like any other position if your goalkeeper if Allison gets injured for a month and their reserve goalkeeper Kelleher comes in at Liverpool and does well as soon as Allison's back Klopp will put him in goal that's what happens with your number one goalkeeper you have a number one and a number two so De Gea's our number one loaning Dean Henderson just creates the problem again in the summer unless we're going to loan him to the summer and then sell him but if Newcastle want to pay 30 40 million for Dean Henderson now take the money dean henderson take the move newcastle whether we like it or not are going to become a football club that becomes a very you know um they're going to they're going to become part of the story they're going to become part of the story chelsea did it man city did it newcastle probably will do it so it's a good move for dean henderson he'll be on good money and 
United will generate 30 to 40 million pounds just like that. And anyone who says we won't get 30 million pounds for him, Sheffield United got 25 million for Ramsdale, who was in the championship. So we will, we will get him. Um, we will, we will get good money for him. And I would sell him. I mean, he's on 110 grand a week as well. We are paying a goalkeeper that we don't play more than probably 50% of the Liverpool first team. It's not Dean's fault. It's not, it's, it's not Luke Shaw's fault that he's on nearly 200 grand a week or Harry Maguire is on 200 grand a week or Rashford and Martial are on somewhere between two and 300 grand a week. It's not their fault. I applaud them. Well done. Your agents have, have, have absolutely got a good deal. But Dean Henderson... He's on 110 grand a week, which which will be more than half of the Liverpool first team. It, it, it's absolute crazy what we pay in wages. So, um, I, if, if if there's an opportunity to sell Dean, I would do it. Um, so that's Dean and Lingard. The third player is Eric Bay. Um, so Lingard's summer, Henderson probably going to go in January on loan, and and then we'll readdress it in the summer. But you're just creating more work for yourself in the summer. Eric Bay, probably summer. Um, he's fed up of not getting first team opportunities, which you can probably understand. Um, Phil Jones, probably going to go in the summer now. Um, you know, and, and I'd agree with that. I thought Phil Jones played really well last week, but there's no future in Phil Jones at Manchester United. You know, he played well last week and he's he's got an injury. It's not a bad injury, but it's still an injury, isn't it? The story's been written with him, so that's Phil Jones. So that's four. Um, Pogba, of course, summer. So that's five. Um, Mata, um, I mean, Mata could go this month. I mean, it, it, you know, pardon the pun, but it doesn't really matter when Mata goes, does it? Um, it's not like he's going to play. So Mata could go now or in the summer, but he's one who wants to go as well. Anthony Martial, which we know about, he's desperately trying to get out in January. And Donny van der Beek, probably summer if he's going to go. So that's eight players um, there. But what I wanted to say about this from a from a position of calm again is that out of those eight players, you can get leaks in the press. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it is some of them. Maybe it's none of them. You know, does you know there is unhappiness in the Manchester United squad beyond people who want to leave. There's people unhappy because of where we are in the league. There's people unhappy because of the way that we're playing. There's people who are unhappy running around and getting no service. There's people who are unhappy defending and being overrun. So. You know there are unhappy players who are players who don't want to leave. That 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 that's a fact as well. Um, but out of those eight players there, I actually think that if I'm I agree with Anthony Martial wanting to go. I do. The honesty of it, I respect. He wants to play first team football. It's not worked out at United. Many of you've said he's not good enough for United. So why would you moan about him wanting to go and play elsewhere? It's like double standards, hypocrisy. I've got no problem with Martial wanting to leave. I like him. I wish it had worked out. I think he can go and rebuild his career elsewhere. So fair play. People who don't like Martial, who are moaning that he wants to go, I don't get. So I understand Martial wanting to go. I understand Dean Henderson wanting to go. He wants to go and play football as well. I understand Donny van der Beek wanting to go. He wanted to go to Everton at the start of the season. He wants to play football. I think those three, I've got a lot of respect for Henderson, van der Beek and uh, Martial because they've all been very open about wanting to go and play first team football today. They want to go and play football right here, right now. So I've got no problem with that. They probably are unsettled. They probably are unhappy and that's not a great environment for the for the squad. But that's on the board or the manager to let them go. So, you know, the board and manager have, have been obstructive in some ways with those players going. So I think the board need to be leading on this. Um, I've got no problem with any of those players wanting to go. They've been very honest about wanting to go. Even Donny wanted to go on loan at the start of the season. So... Players who are honest and want to go, you can't argue with that. Um, again, Eric Bay, you can understand it. He's been here a long time. He's deserved more game time. He's not got it. When he's played this season, he's played well. And then he ends up on the bench again. So you can understand why Eric Bay wants to go. You can understand why Juan Mata wants to go. Um, I don't know why we kept him. God knows what lie he was told in the summer because he may as well. I mean, I barely noticed Mata's part of the squad. He's, you know, you just never see Mata. He never should have been kept for a year. Phil Jones, obviously, understand. I don't know whether Phil Jones wants to go, but I think he needs to go. And then that leaves Lingard and, and Pogba, who are different. They're different. They, they're in no rush to go, but they are going to go. They're, they're, they're running their contract down. And I think Rangnick mentioned these players on Friday. 
Um, and whilst he didn't say it directly, he, he did say professionalism. It's very difficult. You know, I, you know, I said it about Pogba, but you can also say it about Lingard. United have, have um, created this situation themselves by, you know, letting long contracts run down. They did it with Herrera as well. But once you get to this point, they're powerless anyway. Um, you can blame them for how they've acted over the last two years. But once it hit the summer, they're screwed. Once that summer transfer window closed, there's nothing United can do in relation to Pogba and Lingard. They can't say we're selling you in January because the player will just say no. So... I mentioned this, I've seen many of you mention this as as long ago as two and a half years ago, well, not two and a half, a year and a half ago. So Pogba would have had two and a half years on his contract. And we used to say, like, we've got to, we can't let Pogba be here in, his, in the final year of his contract. And the reason we said it was because how committed will he be? Like, how ridiculous it is having a player that you know is going to walk away for nothing in the summer. Commitment level you know, focus, professionalism. There's queries above all of that. And this situation has arisen, not with one player, but two. So, look, as I said, Henderson, Van der Beek, Mata, Martial, their situation's different because I think they just want to play football right here, right now. And it's whether they can get those moves to do that. Pogba and Lingard, you could offer them anything tomorrow and they probably wouldn't take it because, you know, their mind is set that they're going to run their contract down. Um and be in a strong position in the summer. So they're the eight players, and I, I don't think there's any secret about it. Um, and and it, it is a lot of players to have unsettled at, at the club. Um, but it feeds into one of the big problems that United have, which is we've, we, we've accumulated a lot of players, and our squad doesn't get... We've got a big squad, but it's nothing like the squad Chelsea have got, or PSG, or Manchester City, and yet we're probably paying more money for it. What we pay in wages is abysmal. Um, Sakari was played under Rose and Hutter, both coaches mentored and taught by Ranjik at Salzburg. Makes perfect sense to sign him, says Sunday League Pundits. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now, Sunday League Pundit. But listen, listen up here. I'm telling you now. If we hadn't sold Dan James, he'd have played brilliant last night against Villa and he'd have supported Shaw or wan I'm telling you, you think I'm stupid, but Dan James and Marshall, Marshall, if you've got Marshall on the left and Dan James on the right, I'm telling you now, Mark, I'm telling you, Dan James on the right, Marshall on the right, on the left, they'll they'll track back. They'll put the work in. They'll help Shaw and Delo. They'll They'll pass it to them on the overlap. They'll put a cross in. I'm telling you, Martial and James instead of Greenwood and Rashford last night, we'd have played better as a team. You know what? Actually, taking the piss there, I actually agree. <laughs> I actually do agree. No, I do agree with that. I mean, I was talking. I was sort of having a bit of a laugh, but I actually do agree that James and Martial would have put more work in defensively and probably been more creative. But I wouldn't want James back. To be honest, I really wouldn't. I've, I've forgotten what my point is now. Um, we've got an update on Zakaria, though. Um, th there was a point about... I don't know what it was. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm telling you now about Zakaria. Rangnick wants Zakaria. Yeah, 100%. I I'm absolutely convinced that Rangnick wants Zakaria. It ticks every single box he's hinted about. Um, and, oh, here we go. We've got a few more updates. Um this well this this is a this is a really good source really good source Constantine Eckner on uh, Twitter who's a german based specialist um you know you'll have heard about him before especially around the Sancho deal he's come out in the last 2 minutes again via MUFC MPB he says talks are ongoing between Manchester United and Dennis Sakaria's camp over a january move munch and gladback haven't received an offer yet this is building this is building, 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 and I'm very, very excited about it. There is another update as well. I don't know who this is. I don't know. Oh, this is from Ronan Murphy as well. He's, again, very good on the German side of things. Um, he says that a move to the Premier League is now on the cards for Dennis Sicaria. Munch and Gladbach are willing to let him go for €6 million Euros this month. This is hotting up. It's hotting up. Manchester United... Um, at MUFC MPB on Twitter have just put both of those quotes out. This is hotting up. And uh, Zakaria 
to Manchester United. Well, look, Premier League, as I said, he could end up at Arsenal. But um, it's definitely, definitely hotting up. Unlike Alvarez over Christmas, where it's all agents and everything like that, this is hitting the mark on a story. Ekner, Ronan Murphy, Sky Germany, they're all in Germany. They're all very good at updates on what's going on. The next one I want is Christian Folk. If Folk comes out and says the poker game's going off, I'm really excited. If Romano comes out, we're laughing. So I'm not 90% club, but um, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because... I'd be excited if it was Kamara. I, I admit, I, I would be happy. I would be happy if it was Kamara. Um, I'd be happy if it was any holding midfielder who has the potential to come in and make a difference because that's what we need. We need any holding midfielder who can come in and make a difference or the potential to make a difference. And look, potential to make a difference isn't John Joe Shelby. I mean, somebody that's you know got a bit of pedigree and. Whatever you think about Zakaria, he's got a pedigree and he has been well scouted and linked to Manchester United and big clubs over the last three or four years. So available for 16 million, uh, 6 million. It's got to be worth a look. So look, it's, it's, it's exciting. There'll be people who aren't excited about it. Look, I'm a bit biased. As I say, if, if you've been watching the United stand for over two years, you'll know I've mentioned Zakaria on numerous occasions as a player that is well worth a look. I wouldn't put him in, you know, I would actually. Five years ago, two years before Liverpool bought him, we were talking about Fabinho as well. So hopefully it's one of those players that we were, were right on. Um, but United have got to get this deal done now. You, you know, this can't be, we can't let this slip now. We, we desperately need a midfielder. We desperately need a boost. I also think the club needs a boost. I think it needs a player. It has to be a midfield, but it needs a player to come in as well to give us a bit of a kickstart, to give us a bit of a boost. Would you give up on Man United if we don't sign Zakaria in January? Well, I'll never give up on Manchester United legend, but I um, I, I think top four is gone if we don't make a signing in this, in, in, in this January transfer window. We, we need a midfielder. That's what we, do, we need. And uh, um, I think it's um, it's very exciting. I've just tweeted on at Mark Goldbridge both of those sources and where they came from uh, via That's Football TV. Um, so if you want to check those quotes directly at Mark Goldbridge on Twitter, you will see. Um, but it, it, it's building. It's absolutely building. It's very, very exciting. And um, I hope it's going to happen. Um, it's um, They are good sources. They're good German sources. Uh, Ekner and um, Ronan Murphy and obviously Sky Germany as well. So look, let's see what happens. I, you know, we, we could get something tonight. It could really build tonight. It could hit tomorrow. It might go quiet for a few days, but um, it's exciting. Um, I mean, I've just read here that... Oh, no, 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 no. Fair play. There is a lad on Twitter called at Josh, um, GI197, Two years ago, wrote an article about Dennis Sicaria, um, saying that he was one of the um, uh, Bundesliga's most highly regarded talents, which fits in with probably when we were talking about him on here as well. Drifted a little bit because of the injury and COVID, but I think... Um, and the good thing about this is this, this would be a Ranić signing. This is this is not... Oli's never making this signing. Never in a million years is this a player that United... Zakar, you know, never in a million years has Ranić come in as an interim, and Darren Fletcher and Murta have gone. Would you like? Ran uh, could, could I just shock you? Would you? Would, would you like Zakaria in January? Because we've been scouting him for ages. This is definitely Ranić coming in the door and going. We want. Um, we want. Um, I want Zakaria. So, which is what you want, you know, a manager giving a player that he wants, but. We've got to get the deal over the line. And one thing that Ronan Murphy said is that he's looking on the cards that he's going to move to the Premier League. Doesn't mean he's going to come to Manchester United. What if Arsenal swoop in and get him? So, um, yeah. Would you prefer Kamara, Mark? No, I actually wouldn't. I thought about this today. 
I wouldn't. Even if Arsenal got Zakaria and we got Kamara, I would prefer Zakaria because I know more about Zakaria. Kamara, I don't... I trust a lot of people who've spoken to me about him and I've seen little bits of him, but I, I don't know a lot about Kamara. I like Badashiel, and I've seen a bit of him, but it's, uh, not Badashiel, uh, Chumini. But um, mixing up my Monaco players there. But um, no, I, 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 I would go with Zakaria because I know more about Zakaria. It's a safer bet for me, but you know, it doesn't mean I'm right. You see the news about Spurs and Cassie. If they pull this out off, we... we uh, um, and we don't sign uh, Zakaria, our club is lost. I haven't seen that, but it wouldn't surprise me about uh, Kessie. Although I think, didn't Romano say Kessie won't won't go anywhere till the summer? What is the price tag we're looking like, says Cormac? It'll be about six million, I think, mate. Yeah, about six million. Anyway, look, we'll see what happens. Hopefully by the morning show. Um, Zakaria is not, can I just say as well, Paul has just said it there. Zakaria is not injury. There's two myths we need to dispel, right? One, he's not injury prone. He had a bad knee injury. He's been back playing for a year. In that year since his bad knee injury, he's missed. He's had three um, absences. Two of them were to do with COVID and one of them, I think he missed three days. He's not injury prone. That's one. Two, his passing range and passes per game are better than McTominay and level with Fabinho. Like, he's good at passing. Three... Bayern Munich, Liverpool, loads of clubs like him and have been interested in him for a while. So this this myth that he's an injury-prone um, Swiss bloody John Joe Shelby is a load of bollocks. It's it's not. I think pe I think what's happening is those people who know about Zakaria are quite excited about it, but realistic that he's coming from the Bundesliga, so let's not say he's going to be a definite hit. And then you've got people who don't want Zakaria, so they are throwing negative shade on him that's not actually true but as I said those people that don't want Zakaria are because they want somebody else but most of those players that they want can't get in January anyway and we still can get those players in in the summer as well as getting Zakaria now I wouldn't mind Ruben Neves I still think we can get Ruben Neves or Tillemans in the summer and get Zakaria now because Matic is gone in the summer Pogba's gone in the summer so we need two midfielders anyway uh, anyway, look, thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you wait up for two hours, you'll probably get slow sports news. Zakaria is Swiss. Um, but we have had very good updates tonight and hopefully they will develop tomorrow morning as well. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Thanks everyone for watching. Really enjoyed the show. Smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. And um, look, I'm excited because I like it. I like, it's like when we got Bruno. When we get a player that we've spoken about on this channel quite a lot before they actually come, for years we've been talking about Zakaria. We were talking about Bruno for about two years as well. It would be really exciting to get a player that's... It's always nice when it's a player that you feel that you've scouted as well. And um, it's nice when you get a player you've never heard of as well, but I would be very excited about this deal. But let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. I'll speak to you all in a bit. Oh, and Boohoo Man, 40% off. You can get your bargain. Hopefully United are going to get their bargain. 40% off with the code United Stand. Links in the video description for Boohoo Man. Loads of clothing if you're into active wear, your track suits, all sorts of stuff. 40% off with the code United Stand. I'm wearing my track suit tonight. Um, get yours. Links in the description.